This week we're continuing on our way to making a KML or KMZ file that contains contour temperature data from the Mesonet. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, we're going to keep working on our gridded temperature observations and making those into a file that Google Earth can display for us. So last week, we got things gridded up, and we were able to make this plot with matplotlib. Now, we've worked on adding points to KML files before, so these next few lines are going to be very similar. And if they don't look too familiar to you, you might go back a couple of MetPy Mondays. So we're going to import simple KML. I'm going to create our KML file object. Notice that's a capital KML there. And we'll give it a name, Mesonet Air Temperature. And now we're going to want to go over each of these stations and put them on our map with that little anemometer symbol that we used last time to remind ourselves what's in our data frame here. We've got a station ID, a station name, and Latin lawn that we're going to use. So we're going to go over our data frame with iter rows. And we don't need that index, so we can throw it away. The point is going to be kml.newpoint. For the name of the point, we're going to use the station ID. This is what will show up on the map. For the point description, if you click on or hover over, we're going to use the point name. And we'll line wrap the coordinates. This is a list, remember it's x, y and it's a tuple of coordinates in the list because there could be more than one. Row longitude, row latitude. Okay, so now we close the tuple, close the list, and close the function call. Quite the series of operators there. Going to set the icon style, icon href, to be our noun anemometer PNG. So that gets our points in the KML file. I'm going to import matplotlib so we have it in our namespace in case we need it. And we're going to go ahead and write a couple of loops that are going to go through the collections in our contours return. And then in those collections, go through each path for each contour. But before we do that, I need to show you a little bit about colors in KML. So simple KML.color.red, simple KML color green and simple KML color blue. So this took a little bit to figure out when messing with how to do this and get the correct output in Google Earth. So what we're really looking at here is FFs for our, uh, the A component of the RGBA hex string, if you will. And then red, notice we've got these two Fs here, green, we have the 80 here, and blue, we have the Fs here on the left. So instead of RGBA, it's reversed. It's A, B, G, R. So that took me a little while to figure out, and this is how I did it, by just looking at the colors that are built into simple KML and how they were represented as these hex strings. All right, now if you remember up here, we got a handle to our filled contour objects, and I said that'll come in useful later. And it's later now. So we're going to iterate over the collection 
objects that are in our collections attribute of CS. And I'm going to enumerate just so we have uh, some little handles that we can print out and watch the progress of things and experiment with. So we're going to get collections from CS. And I will use an F string. And we'll just say it's collection I for now. For J path, in enumerate collection dot get paths. So now for each path, so we're going through the collections of paths, and then for each path, we need to actually get the vertices of these paths, transform them into the proper coordinates, in this case, our plot query. And then we need to create polygon objects. So there are quite a few steps to doing this, and we're going to do it very verbosely, so it's easier to follow. We're going to get the vertices for each path. The x vertices are going to be around all of the first dimension, the zeroth second dimension. And as you might expect, the oneth things in the for y. Now we're going to project them. So x projected, y projected, and we don't care about elevations. Our data projection, we're going to use the transform points method. And the two projection, x and y, and we're going to transpose that output. Now I'm going to create a list of XY pairs that represent the boundary of our polygon. Unfortunately, these came back as just X's and Y's and we can pair them up. You could do this a little more efficiently, but again, we're going to go for verbose here so we can follow what's going on because as you'll see, it's not all that straightforward. So I'm gonna create a boundary list for a, b, and zip, x projected, y projected, boundary.append, we're going to append a tuple of a, b. So that's just taking x projected, y projected, making tuples of coordinate pairs. Now we're finally ready to make our polygon. I'm gonna make a new polygon. Right now the name, we're just gonna call it a contour. And the outer boundary is our boundary list that we just created. The line style width, you could set this to zero or one or 10, whatever you prefer for the look of your plot. I'm gonna set it to one. And now we need to get the color of that contour. If we look up at our map, remember, these are all colored. I want to get that contour and replicate it, or that color of that contour and replicate it in my KML. So I'm gonna use collection.getFaceColor. Because remember, this is not just on an individual path, but that whole collection of paths is going to have the same face color. And we get the zeroth element. Red, green, blue alpha. Now these are going to be between zero and one. Again, just determined from experimentation. So now I need to make that hex string that Google Earth is expecting. We determine the first two elements are going to be FF. Then I want a two character wide hex formatted placeholder and another, and another. And we're just using the old syntax here for fun, just to remind ourselves that it does still work. I'm gonna take my blue element times 255, since zero to 255, or zero, zero to FF in hex, is what we're going for here. Green, 
And remember we're doing these in the reverse order because of what we determined earlier. Okay, now we've made our color hex string. Now we're going to finally set the color of that polygon, the style, poly style, color attribute to be simple KML dot color dot change alpha int. The first color here is going to be the actual alpha applied, 0 to 255. I'm going to use 200, so pretty opaque here. And our color hex string. Okay, so we run that, and the first thing that we have is a typo. We had our data projection there with an underscore. We're running through our collections. I didn't print out each path for now. For troubleshooting, though, we may have to. Okay, so we've gone through our collections. going to save my KMZ file out with our same name, test file dot KMZ as we've used in the past. That's KMZ. And we get again get that warning about having duplicate icons. That's fine. So now let's open it up in Google Earth. All right, so interestingly enough, we do have our polygons and we've got the little white lines between them since I set my line width to be one. They're projected into the right coordinate space because they do plot over Oklahoma, but we've got quite the mess going on here in the center. So next we have to troubleshoot why our polygons aren't plotting properly in the center of this plot and what we can do about it. And that'll be the subject of next week's MapPy Monday.